This made me so sad to see this star of stage and screen. The man played fucking Hamlet. Mm-hmm. Just stupidly oh, hitting a box with a crutch. Yes. yes. He was an ex- experienced and celebrated Shakespearean actor. Is he a good actor? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very sure. Is he a good actor in this? No. No. Okay. Okay. C- counterpoint. There are moments. Counter counterpoint. I think he thinks he's in a different movie than everybody else. <laughs> For sure. For sure. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the one and only Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going, buddy? I'm amazing, Heath. Excellent. And we also have first time guest masochists, Katie and Alan of the Werewolf Ambulance Podcast. Katie, Alan, welcome to the show. Oh, thank Hi. You. Thank you for having us. Very well, thanks, excited. Guys. And we have quite the selection. So Katie, tell us, what are we going to be breaking down today? We watched The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. It's the story of what happens when a priest who is losing his faith and a child with religious trauma do a mind meld, and the result is locusts. Yeah. So many locusts. There's a lot. There's a lot of locusts. And Alan, how amazing would you say this movie is? Uh, Fair to middling? (laughs) Is that an amazing? Amazing? Yeah, man. (laughs) Strongly disagree. (laughs) I enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. The watching of this movie was much better than our average watching experience. I'll say that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. You guys watch a lot of movies and hard ones. (laughs) Big quotes there, yes. All that being said, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved The Exorcist, but you wish it involved more hypnotism, Shakespearean masters, and the white man's burden, you (laughs) will love this movie. This is your grandma describing the black neighborhood, the movie. (laughs) It's rough. Rough. This movie is so racist that I was like, okay, this must be real, right? There's no way they would invent something this for nope. They made it up. They made it up. (laughs) <laughs> and it's real bad. All right. So before we get started, for anyone who hasn't heard it already, can you all tell us about Werewolf Ambulance a little bit? Sure. Werewolf Ambulance is a horror movie review comedy podcast yeah. that we have been doing for about eight and a half years now. Yeah. We just we just recorded episode 420 last night. Nice. So there's an enormous amount of episodes to listen to. We are not a place to go to if you want information about horror Mm-mm. movies. Because our motto is um, <laughs> being fun is better than knowing things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agree. And we've had a great guest or two. Yeah! I was on it, but seriously, I, am, I have been so excited to have you guys on this show for literally since I met you being on Werewolf Ambulance. I listen to Werewolf Ambulance. Like, I am... A, I am almost through your entire backlog. That's how much I love your show. So thank you. If you're listening to this show and you want to hear people who make me deeply, deeply jealous with how funny they are, go ahead and check out Werewolf Ambulance. Oh, stop. And if you want to hear the one of the raunchiest episodes we've ever done, I suggest listening to the one that Eli guested on because mm-hmm. we still reference our Boycom agreement. Oh, I can't Look, say it out loud. He can't say it. Interesting. You guys brought up Boycom. I was just rolling with the Boycom. Don't, I don't, don't think know that we, we did. did. <laughs> <laughs> that felt very unified in that response. I feel like you guys went over that. There was a, there was an official statement written. <laughs> And check, we denied <laughs> Boycom. Heath, Heath, quick, move on. All right. Format, format. Damn. Strong recommend on Werewolf Ambulance. Everybody check it out. So, and Boycom. Is <laughs> also, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I feel like I don't recommend it just based on context clues. I mean, you know what Boycom is. Yeah, yeah. Heath, would you take a guess? What do you think Boycom is, man? <laughs> oh, like I thought you were saying you- Boycon and it sounded kind of bad. That's it. Okay, now. Oh, even no, it's really bad. <laughs> no, it's all worse. bad. Okay. Hey, let's talk about our thing. Or the other <laughs> movie we're- Exorcist. Is there anything you'd like to nominate this one? For being the best at being the worst at. I would like to nominate this movie for being the best worst 
airport impulse buy for that dress shirt that Father Lamont is wearing in the scene immediately when he returns from Africa. When Sharon opens the door and he's wearing a suit, like the very tight priest suit with an African printed dress shirt under it, I screamed. It was not the only time I screamed, but I fucking screamed. This is a dashiki. No, it's not. Stop saying that. Stop saying dashiki. I was going to say he might as well spend the rest of the movie walking around in a dashiki saying like, you know, when I was in the Congo. No, (laughs) no. 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 Richard? Absolutely not. The fact that the dashiki was hidden underneath of a Western style <laughs> sports coat. It's like just a little bit, just a flavor. An just undergarment. Give a like Jared yeah. Kushner in body armor. It looked ridiculous. <laughs> it's like an Ocean City, Maryland hoodie that he bought on the boardwalk. <laughs> yeah. Of exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Alan, you got a best worst for this movie? Yes, I would say the Mud City Miniatures, which is also the name <laughs> of my new band. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's it's the name of my minor league baseball team. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm glad that they're not gonna conflict. The Toledo Mud City Mud Hens. Toledo Mud Hens, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I never get to talk about sports. Yeah, we never get to talk about the Toledo Mud Mud Hens. I've been saying that for years. <laughs> Eli's weird about it. He's like, sports, boo. Anyway. Sports boo. For best worst, I was gonna go with best worst giant. Rolling screw. (laughs) Interesting. So part of the movie is set in some sort of like children's hospital scenario. Mm -hmm. And I think as a toy or a therapeutic object, there is a giant screw like the size of a person and they roll it around. Yeah. Is that a real thing? I don't think so. I want one of these regardless. It seems super fun. I don't know. Maybe it would be therapeutic for me. Can I just say, this is the kind of thing we're wrong about and we get three emails from like licensed clinicians being like, actually, it's called the Wunderman Bockle yeah, right. and <laughs> it's really helpful for kids who have PTSD related to automotives. And I've got to be like, yeah. I, I, I was not intending to hurt the feelings of people. We don't know. These the answer. <laughs> it's so distracting. They're trying to do like serious scenes about exorcisms. It's and the then best. like right behind them is a giant screw getting rolled across the frame. And I'm like, I, I can't pay attention to anything other than that. I want one of those. It's for the kids who could never find the three eighths wrench to hand to their father. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so disappointed in them. <laughs> Give Heath a couple of turns with that one. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst falling. Oh Lord. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it when we get to it. It's, it's, <laughs> It's the greatest. They fall badly in this movie. You'd think that wouldn't be that hard, but it's bad. It's bad. All right. I think we're going to take a quick break to get ready for this whole thing. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Exorcist 2, The Heretic. All right, everybody. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Ooh, I love that title. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. Came up with that in the shower. Now, all we need is a movie to go with what I thought of in the shower. So what are you thinking? Um, What about an origin story? Love it. Huh. Like okay. how the girl got possessed? Yeah, exactly. Like what if it turns out it was an ancient demonic spirit that Father Marin had actually met before? Ooh, um, I, I, I mean, I guess so. Isn't just the devil in the first movie? Yeah, but, you know, we never said that. So, like, this spirit could be an evil spirit of the air named, um, I don't know, Poopy Pants? What? Sorry, did you say Poopy Pants? Yeah, you see, Poopy Pants realizes there are miracle healers being born all over the world, so he's got to possess them and kill them to stop their magic powers. Uh, Okay, sorry, this is just getting really far from the original story, you know what I'm saying? Poopy pants? And James Earl Jones is a former possessed kid who lives in a mud city in Africa. They have those. But what? he has jaguar powers that poopy pants is afraid of. And he's going to help fight poopy pants. No, no, he will not help in any way, shape, or form. Because actually, the priest who the movie is about connects to poopy pants using a hypno machine and the original girl. So (sighs) he has to physically murder her in doppelganger form at the original house. All right. Well, uh, that was all nonsense and entirely disconnected, but we only allotted this much time for the meeting. So I guess we're going with that. Nice. Can we at least come up with a name other than poopy pants for the demon? Only if it's equally silly. All right, you guys ready to record? Yeah, 
almost. But Keith, before we do, there's something I need to tell you. Okay. See, Katie and Alan here, they're my funny phone. Sorry, your funny phone? Yeah, I know. Years ago, I was able to keep up with all the japes required on our shows, but these days it's just been too much. That's why I hired Katie and Alan to be on all of our calls silently and give me great jokes so that I can continue to be the heart and soul of our podcasts. It's true. Yeah. Okay. Would we say heart and soul? Well, it doesn't matter. How has that not been costing you a fortune to do that? Oh, well, that part's easy. You see, I have Mint Mobile. What's Mint Re Mobile? Really? Katie, first episode? Your first episode and you're going to do that? As the first company to wow. sell premium wireless service online only. We're in a fight. Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. $15 a month? No way. Way. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Plus, all plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. All right, Eli, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? I personally endorse this product. To get your new cool. wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the pan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right. Well, um, are you going to be okay to record without your writers? Uh, Tell him he's tall. You're tall. You guys give that advice a lot? Yeah. Hmm. We're still in a fight. And we're back. And we're going to start off with a list of old-timey actors that I have never heard of, but I think <laughs> Eli seems pretty excited about some of them. Come on! <laughs> Richard Burton, Linda Blair, nope. James Earl Jones, Darth Vader. Okay, heard of I've heard of James Earl Jones, but <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> Louise Fletcher, Best Actress Oscar Award winner, is in this piece of shit. She Ouch. sure is. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I'm devastated for her throughout this movie because you know yeah. she was only cast because she looks like Ellen Burstyn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we also point out that the opening music to this sounds like demons doing a mean Yoko Ono impersonation? <laughs> See, I thought it was giving <laughs> Diamanda Gallus vocal warm up vibes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt bad for the orchestra that had to deal with this because it was clearly like, here's the music note. Somebody's going to be doing crazy fucking screams. I don't know. Do some orchestra stuff for that. <laughs> and they did the best they could. But it's the 70s. They were like, it's a Wednesday. No, yeah, we right. get it. Sure. <laughs> and they're going to be wearing clothes. Nice. Good week. Good week. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're at an exorcism of some sort and a priest shows up. And he, he checks to make sure he's got the, the right magic words. He's looking in the Bible to make sure he's got it. This is Father Lamont. He's going to be our main character. And he goes over and he throws some holy water on a woman who is clearly possessed, but also claiming she's a healer and doesn't deserve this. Yeah. Also, it appears that he's doing this exorcism in the trash compactor of the Death Star. Is that is that where this is said? <laughs> I just can't imagine doing my job so poorly that another, watching another human being burning to death and then slowly walking back outside of the room, mumbling, probably nobody's <laughs> nerfed and leaving. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, ah, oh, that went badly. Ah, fuck it. And he just leaves. Yeah. <laughs> so the fire happens because the possessed woman, she like turns into the demon all the way. And gets up and there's candles everywhere. So she like flips all the tables with candles and the whole room lights on fire and she lights on fire and she's a demon. Yeah. My, my note here is don't have demon weapons right there next to yes. the demon that you like. <laughs> oh, let's just set up our, you know, collection of flaming swords only wieldable by a demon. Ah, oh, she grabbed him. Oh, she grabbed him. She, yeah. This room appears to be made of two things, candles and ribbons. So I don't know what they were really <laughs> yeah. expecting. I'm going to stop you there because about half of the candles were actually just flickering Christmas lights. Like nobody would notice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they definitely yeah. were. <laughs> Can I say that the motto for the exorcist to the heretic was nobody's going to notice. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So everyone on fire and then cut to a very jarring new scene it's a tap dancing audition yeah. and a tap dancer named Reagan. She's one of the other main characters. She's uh, dancing around and she's flirting with the Barry Sachs guy, which I kind of enjoyed. Right. They're doing Lullaby <laughs> of Broadway. Now, to be clear, 
Reagan is played by Linda Blair, who was the little girl in the original movie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is only four years later. Exactly. But unfortunately, she has grown up to be Amy Schumer using the bold glamour TikTok filter. <laughs> and that is all I am able to think of the rest of the film. It is working for me. I'll be yeah. honest. <laughs> she's a child. Yeah. Thank Wait, you. Wait, no, she's a, hold on, hold on. I mean, Amy Schumer, the adult. Wait, what? Uh. What happened? <laughs> Sounds like we might have a Pazuzu on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we won't have on our hands? Any boy come. Excellent. Brought it full circle. <laughs> I was going to do it, and then I didn't want to bring that back full circle. That's fine. I'm proud of you. We talked about <laughs> That's what I'm here for, to bring back the cuttable material to call back to other people's podcasts. Yeah, we talked about boy cum earlier. I'm not sure the context, but that's the game for today, apparently. So there we go. So we finish up with the little tap dancing audition, and then Reagan shows up for a meeting with her therapist, Dr. Tuscan. Mm-hmm. This meeting is in a medical facility that appears to be on the Starship Enterprise, but Thank with no you. walls. It's <laughs> very confusing. It looks like the future and the past at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It's like the weird old 70s shit, but there's doors that are like with like lasers and holograms. I feel like they were like, hey, David Cronenberg, do you mind if we borrow this for a little while and do a movie <laughs> yeah. here? Right. And he's like, well, I was going to have a baby come out of someone's nose in this later, but I guess this is fine for now. <laughs> Just don't get it messy, because I'm going to get it messy. You know what I'm saying? Real messy. <laughs> also, I love that the people who made this movie, and we'll talk about how problematic they are in a variety of ways, but I love that the people who made this, they were like, it's a school for schmurschmurs, right? There, there's a kid with Down syndrome. There's a girl who appears to be deaf. Later, someone will have autism, which this movie is pretty sure is a stutter, right? Yep. And also Reagan, who was once possessed with a demon. So it's come on down to therapist shack of broken brains where we'll oh, yeah. put you in an octagon and fucking raise a beep beep over you. For sure, 100% in the original script by whoever the fuck wrote this, it was like, orphan asylum. You get it, right? And they like had to make that. It's insane. Yeah. So this is where we meet the uh, another main character, a ridiculous machine. It's a nightmare, hypnosis, mind-melding machine. Hypnosync machine. The hypnosynchronizer. And you can hook two people up and they can both explore the, the memories of demon stuff in the one person. Oh, man. And everyone just accepts that this is real. Yes, there is no question of like, so you you invented this out of a, a fan belt and some thumbtacks and it it, wor it works. It works. Okay. 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 All, right. All right. That's yeah. what's up. The buy-in that this movie does is glorious, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, no, I, I can see you, the audience, might be skeptical. There's two lights. They go boop, boop. You got to get your boops to match. And then you can see each other's dreams and also Africa. Any questions? <laughs> I thought not. Let's roll on with the film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we see that ridiculous thing and they decide, okay, we're going to use this tomorrow at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. And then we, we cut to a Catholic church where a cardinal is meeting with Father Lamont and the cardinal wants Father Lamont to investigate the death of a different priest named Father Merrin who died during an exorcism. Yes, and this is the priest from the first movie. Oh, okay. I have not seen the first Keith, movie. have you seen The Exorcist? I have not. No, I know that's the one with the projectile vomit, right? That's like all I know about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that mm -hmm. is it. Okay, so Father Merrin died in Exorcist 1? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Got it. I should point out that if you haven't seen Exorcist 1, you are missing out on just how fucking batshit this movie is to be oh, Exorcist 2. Oh. We have a thing on our show that we refer to as the poltergeist drop-off, which is poltergeist mm. 1 to poltergeist 2, mm. but this is by mm. far a steeper drop. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say this is worth renaming. Because <laughs> this, when you watch the masterpiece that is the Exorcist, and then you, because I, idiot that I am, I was like, I like the Exorcist, I'll watch Watch The Exorcist the week that I'm going to watch Exorcist 2. No. Watch The Exorcist. I was like, such a good movie. So scary. And I watched this movie the entire time going, I don't think anyone who made this movie saw the original Exorcist. Not a single person. They did. But the guy who 
directed this hated the original. Oh. And so he was like, I can do something different. I can do something totally different. And he he did. James <laughs> Earl Jones hasn't even spat a tangerine. This movie makes no fucking sense. Oh my God. Uh, fucking, he was just hitting a never, uh, an everlasting gobstopper and had to huck it into a pool. <laughs> I thought it was a, um, a cocoon, which is a, it's a fruit in oh, okay. Africa. Well, yeah, you're probably right. But okay. um, I don't <laughs> think it right. actually was. I think it was intended to be. I saw a tomato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was actually a tomato. There's going to be a weird tomato spitting thing. I mean, we'll get to it when we get to it, but Pin and Katie's no deep and extensive knowledge of African fruits. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be pulling that pin out later in the film. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that is the extent because I Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're having this meeting and the Cardinal is like, all right, the theological college which is something that does science in their head. They decided this was a demon killing a priest. And we, we also decided Father Marin was a Satanist. So what he needs Father Lamont to do is prove that Marin was not a Satanist so that they can publish the books of that guy. And that's the mission, to investigate that and prove he's not a Satanist. Yeah. I'm sorry, how did you hear anything they were saying without just staring at those fuck boys hanging on that cro those crosses behind them? Yes! <laughs> Dudes were so smoking hot. I miss smoking hot Jesuses. <laughs> well, wasn't it? It was like the, it was the two bros on the other side, the thief oh, the and the thieves, whatever. Yeah. Whoever painted that, they like got a talking to when they started to make Jesus too ripped. He was like, hey man, you're making us a look about it. Don't make Jesus too Jim. And he was like, but what about the two thieves though? He was like, you go fucking crazy, my guy. You go fucking crazy. And one of them just like coyly raising their leg up. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. I'll go ahead and say it. Hardcore pornography. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say it. Okay. Because I'm brave. <laughs> Thank you for your service. But yeah, Richard Burton, and I will always call him Richard Burton because he's the oh, main yeah. character. Richard Burton agrees that he's going to investigate the exorcism of the first movie and prove that Father Marin isn't a Satanist. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they wrap up their meeting and then Father Lamont shows up to meet with Dr. Tuscan about Reagan's exorcism that killed Father Marin. So he's at the facility of some sort where she works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the futuristic old-timey facility thing. <laughs> right. This part of this movie is the strongest argument for why we needed HIPAA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because basically Father Marin walks in and after showing nothing and saying nothing, Dr. Thornburg or whatever the fuck her name is, is just like, you Tuscan. are a part of this movie. Tuscan. Tuscan, yeah. <laughs> the doctor is like, you are a part of this movie now. Anyways, Reagan's repressed that time she killed two people. And I think if she remembers, she'll fucking, if you know what I'm saying. So we're doing the hypno beam. Want to play with us? <laughs> and she, Reagan is watching them have this whole conversation because everything is glass. There are no walls. People live here. <laughs> <laughs> We will learn people <laughs> sleep here, which is very, very confusing. Also, I have to talk, it's just a tiny moment, but it makes me so happy. You know, they, they have to have this like skeptic versus believer moment where she says like, well, you know, evil isn't real. And he says, no, no, evil is a guy. He's a, he's a goat angel and he lives in an underground fire. Rihanna is there with a guy on a leash and she's like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, okay, but then she's like, okay, but uh, you will be able to sit in on all the rest of my stuff for the rest of the movie. I'm a doctor. Oh, yeah, I can't can't see a problem with that at all. That should no, be totally fine. I'm sure no she won't No hippo mind. problems whatsoever. <laughs> Although I will say I would greatly enjoy if there was just a guy sitting in on all of my therapy sessions being like, and we're just not even going to check if he's full of demons. We're not even going to check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So the next day, Reagan and Dr. Tuscan, they're doing their nightmare hypnosis machine thing. And of course, the priest is going to be sitting in for that because that's normal. And the idea is it's going to zoop the demon visions for, from Reagan into Dr. Tuscan's brain, too, so she can help analyze them, I guess. Yeah. And the way the technology works, I found interesting. So the, <laughs> the machine thing has a strobe light facing in two different directions. Two directions, of course. It has, I think, a speaker built in with a theremin connected to it somehow. Boop, boop, boop. yeah. And boop, a boop, smoke boop. alarm later in the movie. <laughs> yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah. 
It has all those things. Well, only when you get the high score. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the idea is if you line up the light flashy thing from one person to the other and the theremin pitch from one person to the other, you share the brain stuff. So like one person, the light slows down for them and the pitch gets lower and then the other person has to like mm, also demon low and then, and then they're together and they're melded up. I feel like you've just put more thought into that than anyone who wrote this movie did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that's how y'all podcast, right? That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> we're thinking so we can podcast. <laughs> yeah, obviously. You, you get the boobs. Also, sorry, I just have to touch on this one thing. You're probably wondering, how do you get your boobs to match another person's boobs? I was wondering. Yeah. And you kind of catcall them, it turns out. Oh. Yeah. So Reagan, her boobs start out low. I mean, she is the base in a four-part men's quartet. She is booping. Mm -hmm. She's booping at a very She's booping low really level. low. Yeah, absolutely. So she has to go, come on, get it lower. More, be more hypnotized. Somebody's <laughs> off. Now we're at a minor second. You need to bring it down a little bit more. There it is. Yeah. And then they can see each other's boobs. <laughs> <laughs> so they finally sync it up and Dr. Tuscan gets a little overload on the demon brain thing and starts having a heart attack. Yes, yes, she does. <laughs> oh, not just a heart attack, though. Oh, oh, so much more than a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. Guys, quick question. Mm -hmm. When someone's having a heart attack, you grab their tit, right? Is that? That's how you control the heart. <laughs> First thing you do. I, I learned that in gym class in high school in the CPR training. <laughs> There's one part of the scene where... Obviously, Linda Blair is trying to avoid this woman's breast and her fingers are splayed Spock style, like going up and around the bosom. And it's just very <laughs> yeah. funny. Yeah. She's doing it for a long time. Yeah. It's so long. And you could see both actresses being like, come on, guys, someone say cut. This is, <laughs> this is gross. I was so focused on the boob grab that I almost missed that superimposing of the scene from the first movie where... Dr. Tuscan becomes Father Marin. <laughs> right. I was like, why is she grabbing her? Who is that? <laughs> yeah. So she starts having the heart attack and they're dealing with her in like real life, but also the demon mind meld things happening. So regular Reagan and old time past ghost demon Reagan in the mind meld are actually, they have like a hand fight over the breast at one point. <laughs> They do. They're both like, grappling. <laughs> which Let me touch was her confusing. Heart. It's like Keith and I fighting over which seat in the car we're going to sit in. I, I <laughs> call the middle. I call middle. <laughs> I will turn this doctor around if you two don't calm down. <laughs> also, at some point, somebody's heart gets pulled out of somebody's chest. <laughs> I wasn't clear on whomst, but it, it wins or loses or something. Does anybody know what happened there? That's Dr. Tuscan's uh, heart. That's what yeah. That's what Reagan was trying to hold in by grabbing her boob. She's like, that's where your heart lives. I'm just going to oh, hold this boob. Got it. Yeah. And Heath, can I say, I appreciate your decorum, but I'm as brave as I am hurtful. So I have to say it. Her heart does not get pulled out. Her heart gets fingered. It's very <laughs> clearly a fingering situation. Okay. Yeah. Just a light fingering. Weird. Is it just me? I'm the only one who saw the fingering motions on the heart? No, there's some flicking of the heart bean. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> I'm not saying it was masterful heart fingering. I'm saying this is like, you know, this is, if I can say it, this is boy cum level heart wow. fingering going on. There it is. This is fumbling someone's heart in the backseat of a 57 Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, speaking of which, this is where Father Lamont jumps in and he's like, I got this. I got this. I'm a priest. Don't worry about it. How? 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 He just puts on the headband and he's there. Well, she's fribulating, so obviously. Yeah. Is that how, that's <laughs> the, how it is? That term uh, that we all use every day, fribulating. Sure. Fribulating. <laughs> but he doesn't focus at all on that scientific word. He's like, I'm going to talk you out of having a heart attack by saying <laughs> priest stuff. <laughs> and that works, I guess. Yep. And then they, you know, they shut down the mind meld. Mm -hmm. From there... We cut to Reagan helping some kids at this facility draw on a big piece of paper thing. So I guess she gets treatment here and it is also a worker here. Yeah. Unclear why Reagan is simultaneously getting therapy and also one of the therapists in this giant hexagon thing. 
by the way, this scene where they're like expositing about like, oh, that was very concerning. Yes, I was very concerned. This is where the kids are starting to roll the giant screw around yeah. in the background. Yeah. So <laughs> this is where a giant screw happens. One hundred percent of everyone in this podcast notes are giant, giant screw. In the background. I'm so distracted. <laughs> I did not watch the rest of this. No. I don't want to be the pedant in this, but they're rolling a giant nut around. They yeah, are. You know what? I was. It, it is a giant nut. I kept I saying screw. No, you're right. It's yeah. a nut. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so these these kids in a BC situation are rolling a giant nut around. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's a big octagonal life size nut. That's boy that's, that's for boy cum. Yeah. BC for boy cum. I was like, boy cum. oh, ancient. And then I was like, no, it's a boy cum reference. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so very important rolling nut scene, whatever. I don't know what happened. <laughs> from there, Liz the nurse grabs the, the uh, drawing from Reagan. Reagan drew Father Lamont during the drawing session. So Liz the nurse grabs that and shows Father Lamont the picture that Reagan drew. And in the picture, he's a demon on fire. And immediately nurse, Father Lamont knows what this means. The nurse is like, she draws well. Like, yeah, she sure fucking does. She does, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's also, they've stylized it in the weirdest, silliest possible way. Have you ever seen those like portraits at the top of New Yorker articles? That's what she's drawn of him. It's so strange. <laughs> but for some reason, Richard Burton interprets this. He's like, all right, well, let's see. She drew me with some flames behind me, which means, and I'm not making this up, something in the basement is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. How does he know? Why would you know? There must be a fire somewhere. The why flames. would Why would the prophetic drawing be so vague about the fire? Why wouldn't it just be like, draw the fire where it is? I don't understand. I mean, it doesn't look anything like him, so it could be interpreted in any way you want it to be. <laughs> I was sure that he had set this fire earlier to like go off at a certain time somehow so that he could be like, see, Pazuzu! It's like a shitty magician trying to hide a card in your grandfather clock. No, don't really come in. Yeah. Here. <laughs> this is for a prophecy later. <laughs> that would imply that this man who has never done anything properly in his life set a plan and it stuck to it the entire time, which he does not do ever. Good yeah, point. No, Absolutely not. But there was a fire. Yeah. They go downstairs <laughs> into the basement and find a fire that was just happening because the pro I know the prophecy knew that the fire was going to be there. So Re Reagan can draw demonic prophecies and the building is on fire. And Father Lamont, the priest, uh, decides to beat up the large fire for a little bit here. Mm -hmm. beat, the, beat the fire to death. And look, I know that you can concuss fire away, but you can't concuss <laughs> fire away with a fucking crutch, okay? There's a big difference between blanket and padding something out and what Richard Burton does for the next six minutes, which is what I can only describe as a hate crime against a cardboard box. <laughs> this made me so sad to see this star of stage and screen the man played fucking Hamlet, mm -hmm. just stupidly oh, he? hitting a box with a crutch. Yes. yes. He was an ex experienced and celebrated Shakespearean actor. Is he a good actor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very sure. Is he a good actor in this? No. No. Okay. Okay. C counterpoint. There are moments. There are mo <laughs> Most of the time he's mailing it in like everyone else in the cast. But I, there are a couple moments I have it in my notes where he's like, let me bring out a little of the H dog. Whoa. And it's, <laughs> in, any, if, in many ways, it's sadder. Counter counterpoint. I think he thinks he's in a different movie than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. I, and he's also just waiting for lunch. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> right. So they finally, I guess, get the fire a little bit out and they call the fire department. Everybody evacuates. Fire department shows up and deals with it. And then Dr. Tuscan and Father Lamont talk some more. Father Lamont explains how that was clearly, that was officially a demon fire drawing prophecy and that her head strappy hypno machine is definitely real magic. So yeah. he needs to use it to fight the demon. Right. Mm -hmm. He has to go back into the matrix. Yeah. He actually, okay, exact words. He actually says, this proves scientifically that there's an ancient demon locked within Reagan. The scientist does not agree or disagree with this, which I found <laughs> upsetting. <Right. laughs> Interesting hypothesis. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> so from there, we cut to Reagan sleeping and uh, an echoey demon is going to take her flying into a doodly-doo which is very exciting. And 
We go into a doodly do. It's this is very problematic. It's somewhere in the 1978 understanding of Africa. Yikes! Which is rough. Oh. We literally fly through a museum exhibit of like African stereotypes. There's Made just... by Rudyard Kipling. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and we see Father Marin doing an exorcism. So back in his past, I guess he was doing missionary stuff in vaguely Africa and he was exercising a demon and there's a locust with a, with a GoPro on a selfie stick flying towards the little village where he's doing the exorcism. We see that for a while. I literally blurt laughed when I saw that locust and I have no so flipping idea why it happened. I love it. <laughs> it's <laughs> shonkiest. Adorable. <laughs> yes, thank you. Big wobbly ass. I would buy this stuffy. If they were selling this Pazuzu stuffy, spoiler <laughs> alert, I would buy one and give it to my toddler. Yeah. <laughs> the prop is a squishmallow. Like, for yes, real, it's absolutely. so silly. <laughs> it's definitely a living locust on a stick that they're <laughs> moving along with the camera and it's very funny. That's the magic of movies. Because its one leg is just like glued to a stick and sticking straight off its body. Like, this isn't how I fly. <laughs> I don't fly like this. Normal I, need, I need an adult. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing in the beginning of this film that said no animals were harmed and I think I know why. <laughs> yeah. So the point is that was a locust invasion that was about to happen in this village. And we see that for a second. And then we cut to Reagan waking up and she starts sleepwalking out onto her, I'm going to call it a personal dove balcony in her Suicide like balcony. billion dollar Manhattan apartment. So now I'm confused about several things. One, Reagan apparently lives in a 48 bajillion dollar New York City <laughs> apartment. Ridiculous. Her balcony contains a steel box made statue covered in birds <laughs> and more importantly her railing is I'm going to go ahead and say giving it about 30% of, of its all <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm pretty sure that bird thing is a dove gym so that they can look at themselves while they're working out. That's why it's Ooh. mirrored. Everything is mirrored in this movie. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. A lot of mirrors. Also, it's a, it's a minimalist railing. That's an artistic thing that they do, I guess. I don't know. Well, I think a good idea with railings is to have like one here and then maybe like a gap and then like another railing here and then nothing on the corner. Oh, a summer railing. Summer yeah. here, summer there. Summer there. Yeah. And summer it's like nowhere. the Miles Davis of railings and yeah. safety devices. <laughs> it's the railing he's not playing. It's the railing you're not putting up. It's about the spaces, yeah. <laughs> Katie, as a fellow parent, did this railing give you tremendous anxiety the entire time? I, I spent this entire scene just clenching my stomach. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Why are they, why does she live there? <laughs> she sleepwalks. Yeah, not a good idea at all. So she does actually sleepwalk all the way to the edge of this thing where, where the railing is not, almost falls off the edge, but then one of her doves from her personal dove balcony like flies up in her face and wakes her up just in time <laughs> to not fall off the edge. And she screams and then we see Sharon run out onto the balcony. I had no idea who Sharon was. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, she has a roommate at her millionaire apartment. That's weird. <laughs> I, I looked it up. I guess if you saw the other movie, the first one, you might know this. Sharon is her tutor and lives with her. Right. Yes. Correct. She's very minor in the first movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And more importantly, she's the only one willing to come back. For Exorcist to the heretic, they were like, they were like, fuck. Okay, who can we get from the first film? Well, I played the tutor. I'll do it. And they were like, oh, all right, you've got a, a really big part. All things considered, <laughs> this is a good point to bring something up about casting and who's not in this movie. In The Exorcist, Heath, you would not know this because you have not seen it. Mm -hmm. There's a character named Father Karras who is the ostensibly main character pretty much in the movie. He's not mentioned in this movie once. No. He also yeah. died the That's night weird. that Father Marin dies. Yeah, his death is, oh, sorry, spoilers if you ever see it, but his death is like the ultimate scene of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and Reagan has a connection to this man. <laughs> okay. And so the Vatican in, in the universe of this second movie, the Vatican was like, fuck that guy, Karis, whatever. <laughs> we'll investigate Marin's death, but that guy, real glad he died. From a demon. Father Marin was a real team player, which is why we will be looking into his death <laughs> right. and not anyone else's. Didn't you recently say on an episode of our show that Max von Zito has never been in a bad movie? 
<gasps> you take oh, it back. Dad. Oh. oh. So now Got I him. have to think this movie's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really did enjoy it. Yeah, so, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> Reagan screams. Sharon runs out onto the balcony. And Reagan's like, oh, hey, Sharon. I was just doing normal uh, dub, dub stuff. You know, whatever. Just checking out the dove gym. A lot of, yep. a lot of gay sex in there. But it's yeah. cool. It's cool. It's <laughs> Fine. And we find out Sharon's about to head to Washington, D.C. for something. Mm -hmm. And then we cut to that. Sharon's standing in the rain and she's about to meet Father Lamont. They're in D.C. And she takes Father Lamont to the house where Reagan got exercised, I'm assuming, as a kid in the first one. Mm -hmm. And this, this might as well be a walking tour of like, God, the original Exorcist was good, huh? Remember how spooky the stairs were? <laughs> do you remember it? <laughs> right on the sound, they do the original soundtrack for a second, yeah. and then the fucking screaming lady comes back in the room from her lunch break, and they were like, "We weren't doing the original soundtrack. We were doing your cool yelly thing that we all like and enjoy a bunch." <laughs> it was called Tubular Bellies. We didn't do Tubular Bells. Just Tubular right. Bellies was something completely different. <laughs> Ours went dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> <laughs> and so she gives him a little tour and she's like yes i have trouble being away from reagan and i was like yeah no i bet but <laughs> richard burton is like have you tried prayer and she does like a ha 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 prayer moment but like if i had seen a demon in person i'd be a big prayer now Fuck i'd be a yes. i'd be a constant <laughs> prayer yeah you would have evidence you yeah. would know yeah <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anybody can spit pea soup. I'm scared of though. Also, I, I love the idea that the sort of babysitter tutor who was also there for this incredibly traumatic experience is now her caregiver. Like, <laughs> seems like she might be a little fucked up too. Mm -hmm. She needs a paycheck. Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah, she's actually like, hey, father, I have a whole lot of trauma from this crazy thing that happened to me. And he's like, I'm not helping. I'm not helping with that. <laughs> I'm not here for you. What a so dick. weird. He didn't come here to make friends. <laughs> I came to win. Yeah. <laughs> Look, if you work for the Catholic Church and someone says, I have a trauma from X, you got to get out. I'm not here for that really quickly. Okay. That's company <laughs> policy. <laughs> right. So at this moment, they're examining the room where that exorcism happened when Reagan was a kid. And correct me if I'm wrong, there's a giant locust just hanging out in the corner of that room that nobody acknowledges, right? And they're treating it like a homeless guy who, who's making a scene in a fucking <laughs> yeah. subway car. They're just like, it's cool. We're just like two steps away. Just like let the locust right do the... I think he's playing a drum. I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I just have a note that says, oh, my friend is back. <laughs> I decided I'm friends with that locust. Oh, you and that locust. You go way back. Back to Africa or Assyria or whatever. Or wherever. <laughs> Who knows? It's all over there. Shh. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess I guess it's an invisible giant locust in this moment. I don't know. The priest is like, all right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray, I guess. And he's, he says, I pray for the uh I don't know, the victims of the exorcism thing, but mostly for me. I pray for me because I'm the main <laughs> character now. And that's the end of that scene. And then we're back in New York City at the weird facility. And Father Lamont is meeting with Dr. Tuscan again to talk about what he found out. Yeah. She hits on him all throughout this scene, right? Oh, sure yeah. does. Big time. Super crazy. Why? So profoundly that I wrote in my notes, I know this porn. Interesting. This movie could <laughs> use a little porn, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It really could. But she also does this amazing punk where she's like, yeah, no, I have kids and I'm also divorced. Fucking say something. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. But also like, don't you ever need a woman? <laughs> yeah. And the and the priest is like, yup. Awkward. And there's this weird silence. And I was like, love where this is going. Lean in. <laughs> because someone was yelling, Richard, you're supposed to say no. And he was like, fuck you. I might get laid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that heart's not going to finger itself. <laughs> <laughs> Richard goddamn Burton. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I'll tell you what I'm not afraid of. <laughs> the poon. <laughs> Liz Taylor's kicked me out again. <laughs> the Vajiji, yeah. Daddy lonely. <laughs> So they're having that insane interaction and then Reagan finally walks in and they're going to do another mind meld. Oh, Lord. Despite the heart attack last time. Just <laughs> yep. put it back on this vulnerable young patient. 
Also, can I just say Reagan walks in as a total cock block, right? They're like, they're basically <laughs> tilting for the kiss. And Reagan's like, hey, hey, anyone looking for your girl who's filled with da -da -da demons? <laughs> <laughs> just dives onto the desk. What up? Pose. So they, they hook up to, to the machine. And now we can see stuff happening in Africa with Father Marin back in the day. <laughs> and the locust swarm we see showing up at this village again. And we learn that it's because this little boy in the village is a magic healer and these locusts are somehow demon-possessed and they attack magic healers. And uh, uh, what what demon? I might have spoiled this a little bit. What, what demon do they work for, Heath? That would be Pazuzu. Pazuzu. Yeah. The silliest possible demon name you could invoke is what this movie will spend the rest of the movie saying with a completely straight face. <laughs> to be clear, I looked up Pazuzu and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. the Assyrian demon king of the spirits of the air. Got it. Why are we in Africa? Why? Because Assyria is a different place than Africa. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Northern Iraq, I'm pretty sure. Not Africa. Yeah. Yep. But they, they think they're in Eastern Africa. I guess they're kind of mildly close location-wise. It's not Africa. No, don't give them any credit. <laughs> Pazuzu is vacationing. He's like, no, no, me and the family always come here. It's nice. These are my locusts. We do Disney World. I think it all boils down to the fact that Pazuzu has a really cool statue with a really big dick. Okay. Yep. <laughs> if you look he at does. the Pazuzu statue, he's got a yeah. huge hog. When, when you Google Pazuzu, right. you understand why they went with locusts as the symbol for this movie. I did not spend enough time Googling Pazuzu. No. Okay. Right. Me either. Good no. But in this flashback that Richard Burton is both describing to us and experiencing, we see he is bringing this kid, who I will call Kokomo throughout the entire thing, <laughs> because it's, so it's not a real name. I Googled it. I was like, oh, I don't want to make fun of like an actual African. Nope, not. They were just like, Richard Burton was like, what about Coco Coco? And they were like, absolutely. We're using that. No one from Africa will ever see a movie. What could be the problem oh, with just... Making yeah. a racist noise in, in, for an African guy. But what, they, what we see in this flashback is he's dragging this kid who is currently possessed up a cliff mm -hmm. to like a special cliffside temple. This is where we get my best worst. So, so they get the kid up the cliff and the guy falls. And I don't know if you've ever seen like bad kung fu, wire fu. Yes. Where like they very clearly get caught for a second and hang there being like, I'm supposed to be over there. That's how this guy falls, quote unquote, <laughs> off the cliff. He's like, oh, not moving, not moving. I'm just hanging here. Ah, there we go. Oh, no. We're told later that they never find his body. And Father Lamont's like, uh, it's right over there. It's right over yeah. there. Yeah. Right <laughs> over there. Do none of you have white guy eyes? Because I can use my white guy eyes and just look around and find him real quick if you need me to. I feel like if you have a cliffside temple at a certain point, you get bored of, you know, helping people up and down from it. <laughs> You're like, there's got to be someone who at every meeting is just like, I know I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Stairs. A set of... St okay, you're all booing. You're all booing. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> right. So we're in the dream state of the nightmare machine mind meld. And we see also Father Marin doing an exorcism on the little kid. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is we're learning from Pazuzu through Reagan into Father Lamont in the mind meld that Pazuzu attacked the kid because the kid is a good magic healer and Pazuzu's a demon who hates that. Correct. Here's my question. Why would Pazuzu explain everything? Why would he explain all this to the people in the mind meld? Great question. Because it's just like going to it's going to be all the information they need to foil him it, cosmically or whatever. Yeah. Also, what does Pazuzu like do? You know, what's his day to day if you're a locust demon? What does Pazuzu Padu do, if you will? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you know, look, you're making the wind into sharp teeth. It's killing people. That's what you're doing on your day to day. And sometimes yeah. you're like, you know what? I just can't lie anymore. Yeah, this is what I did. Can I tell you what I would have loved to include in this movie? Real world esque interviews with Pazuzu. <laughs> just like, you know, Pazuzu in a confessional. <laughs> right, exactly. Back at the house. Oh my God. I cannot stand Reagan. But he's the he's the locust the whole time. Right? He's the big fat Logan. 
<laughs> they yeah. do have a giant locust costume. It's perfect. I really thought this challenge was going to go better for me. I've got to admit that. <laughs> I, I want him in a room with Mario Lopez. It's like, Bazoo. So tell me, what were you thinking in this scene? <laughs> <laughs> is it okay if I call you Paz? <laughs> okay, but just to be clear, Pazuzu is in the Locust with the GoPro and also in Reagan. Yeah, somehow both. Sure. Okay. And now Pazuzu decides he's going to take Father Lamont <laughs> to see the healer kid in the dream state universe. Sorry, sorry. I have to stop you, Heath, because I need to explain to the people who didn't watch this movie. By the way, watch this fucking movie. Yes. Who didn't watch this movie with us, what happens? Pazuzu, the Assyrian demon, goes, do you want to go see Cucamonga? <laughs> and Father fucking Lamont goes, yeah, sure. And he's like, all right, hop on. You're going to... One second, I got to fly us there. And for for some insane reason, they're on the same side for a second so that Pazuzu yeah. can properly expose it. I don't understand this part. What, did they chat on the ride? What what happened there? I feel like they did. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just Richard Burton and Pazuzu making small talk. <laughs> so, um... Is Elizabeth Taylor nice in person? <laughs> no. <laughs> I kind of got that vibe. I kind of got that vibe. Richard Burton is also extremely drunk and throwing oh, yeah. up off the side of the locust. <laughs> it's like, uh, the locust, like, there's uh, water and mints in the back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's right. a bazooper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bazooper. <laughs> yes! Yes! Fantastic. Where's that shirt? We're making that shirt. <laughs> The Pazuber app. Yeah, love it. So I don't care if we make more than one. We're making one shirt. We're sending it to Alan so that Alan has to explain it forever. So Pazuzu the demon, he's like, I'm going to take my Pazuber app. You can come fly the teeth of the wind with me. Share my wings. I'll fly you to this place in Africa slash Assyria and give you all the information you need to eventually foil me. So they do that. And this is where we meet Kakumo the adult version of the kid who's the healer, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is James Earl Jones, by the way, young James Earl. Voice of Darth Vader. Yep. Oh, really? <laughs> and mm -hmm. I didn't know that. We meet him as the locust flies up. We're in locust cam for a second. And then James Earl Jones steps out of a hut and goes to like headbutt the locust. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then he's a leopard out of nowhere. No. And that's the end of the scene. No, he yells a tiger roar. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> All the I noise a leopard screamed. makes. I screamed. <laughs> it's fantastic. I laughed for a while. <laughs> I laughed for a... I laughed so long I had to back 30 yep. seconds twice to, <laughs> to refine myself in this movie. <laughs> okay, so he can turn into a leopard or he can conjure a leopard? Yep. Yes. Yes, he can. Both. Yep. Yeah, because later in the movie, he threatens to spit one out. <laughs> he can also spit leopards. Good point. He's just a lot of leopard-based stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. A young James Earl Jones just turned into a leopard or conjured a leopard or something. So I'm going to need a quick break to process how all, all this is affecting me, like spiritually, sexually, all that stuff. <laughs> and then we'll be back with more Exorcist 2, The Heretic. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Eli. Um, hey. What you doing there? Push-ups. It's not what those are. Keith, be serious. We got to get pumped. What if Alan and Katie decide they want to rumble? Sorry, rumble? Yeah, think about it. We have a movie podcast. They have a movie podcast. They could declare a rumble at any moment. And even if we both try to take on Katie, Alan looks like a biter, Heath. Look, Eli, Katie and Alan are not going to try to rumble us. But more importantly, if you're looking to get in shape d doing whatever those were. Push-ups. Would you say push-ups? Push yeah, fine. Uh, that's not the way to do it. Why don't you try FitBod? What's FitBod? Great question. The FitBod app creates a workout program that's personalized to your goals, fitness level, and available equipment. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts to you as you improve. Wow. I was right. Just pick a fitness goal, select your equipment, and FitBod will create a custom workout program for you. Plus, the app switches up your exercises to avoid overtraining or burnout while keeping your workouts fresh and fun. Okay, but that's got to be crazy expensive, right? No, it's not. A full year of FitBod is less than the cost of a single session 
with a personal trainer. All right, Heath, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Keep up your fitness habit with a personalized workout program from FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription and try the app free at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash G-A-M. Hey guys, you ready to record more podcasts? Oh yeah, sorry. We were just talking about one of our sponsors. That's odd because you should have been talking about this rumble. Bring it. It's biting time! I told you. Minions, gather to me. Yes, Lord Satan. What is your bidding, master? A new opportunity for evil has arisen, and one of you must go and do our dark work. Yes, master. Let it be I, Baal. No, I, Iman, shall do it. Actually, guys, I I was thinking I would give this one to, uh... Pazuzu. Pazuzu? What? Seriously? Look, I, I know he's a little different, but he's actually a very powerful demon. You know, he's from ancient Assyria, you guys. Assyria. He's so weird, though. His thing is like locusts. Locusts, exactly. Dude's demonic plans are foiled by, like, a, a citronella can. Plus, plus, he's always possessing kids. Kids, thank you. So weird. What are you guys talking about? Possessing kids is scary, right? That's scary. Ah, uh, maybe, but it's also kind of, you know. Thank you. It's a vibe. It's a creepy vibe. Look, I've already decided I'm giving this one to Pazuzu, so I need you guys to be supportive and happy for him when he gets here, okay? Fine. Yeah. Sure. What up, what up, Pazuzu in the hizzy? Hey. Hi. Hi. Pazuzu. Right, uh, Pazuzu, I have a mission for you. You see, you will stop the healers of the world before they can make me, the devil, stop my- Wait, 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 let me stop you there. Can I get in a child? Yep, you can, you can get in a child. Noise! Flexmaster P is in! So gross. I hate it so much. Don't give yourself nicknames. And we're back. When we left off, Father Lamont had just flown to Africa on a dream state locust demon and saw a guy turn into a leopard. So they call timeout on the mind meld and Father Lamont tries to tell the story and he becomes like a Brooklyn guy all of a sudden. He's just like, yeah, so I'm flying on the teeth of the wind with the locust demon. And then this leopard guy attacks us. Uh, So yeah, the healer boy is alive, I guess is the point. And they're all like, okay. Scared the Pazuzu straight out of me, let me tell (laughs) you. Also, Reagan mentions that she saw Africa during the mind meld thing. And well, again, no, it's Mesopotamia. But they're like, (laughs) yeah, so Africa is important to this plot now. And they call it a day. And Father of the Monster's like, okay, here's what I got to do. I have to go find the leopard man. And then that guy will teach me how to beat Pazuzu. If you'll excuse me, I must go off for a really unnecessary part of the movie. Like a whole chunk of the film's about to not matter at all. But I'll be back. <laughs> right. I'll be back in a few scenes. I bet a guy that I couldn't say Kokomo 4,000 times. So we're going to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time for Reagan to show her miraculous healing powers because if you thought the term Mud City was offensive, oh wait till you God. see how this movie portrays autistics. Who is the autistic child? That is one Dana Plato from Different Strokes. Oh, what? Yeah. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Heath, you have failed in your role as the Different Strokes coordinator of our movie <laughs> podcast. What you talking about, Eli? Come on. Oh, <laughs> classic. But yeah, the, the way this actress portrays autistic, I would say is one step above duh. <laughs> Yes, this poor child. I kept thinking of the director being like, no, no, it's more stutter. That's what an autistic person does. I met an autistic kid once. (laughs) (laughs) More more, Come on, don't make me say the R word, but it's the 1960s. I will a lot. Come on, do it. Okay, but the point is that Reagan's demon magic is making it so this girl can talk, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, the power of the demon inside her? Something. I don't know. <laughs> so just to be clear, I'm keeping track of Pazuzu's powers here. He's master of locusts. He possesses people, evil tempter, and 
cures autism. Cures autism. <laughs> that's kind. I mean, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like a weird power set. He's a lot, he's a lot like ivermectin, if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't get down with Satanism. Like, it's not my bag. But, like, it makes more sense to me in a lot of ways than, like, being Christian does on some level. Because, like... At least demons are like, yeah, I'm kind of a dick, but I'll do some good stuff too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Christian God's just up there in heaven. Oh man, I just gave that kid autism. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined a perfectly good autism. That I'm going to have to burn an entire city again. <laughs> <laughs> On purpose, yeah. <laughs> so this girl is cured of autism by Pazuzu powers somehow. And then we get Father Lamont telling Dr. Tuscan Pazuzu hours. Like, <laughs> okay, well, demon possession clearly helps cure autism. Here's what we have to do. We have to fight the demon inside of Reagan because it's preventing her from reaching her full spiritual power. So the idea is that Reagan is also a healer like Kakumo, the kid. Yes. Also, we see the giant nut getting rolled across the back of the we do, yeah, no, it's it's hard to keep. They they sum up the scene right after it happens, and I'm not paying attention because they're doing the nut again in the background. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now the only other thing you need to know about this scene before we move on is that Reagan here casually mentions that because he's like, oh, I don't know where in Africa I need to go, and I'm like, it's because you need to go to Assyria, but it's fine, <laughs> it's, it's fine. And she's like, well, I remember seeing it at the museum once. Oh, good grief. Yes. And so they're at the Natural History Museum next. Yep. Yeah. And she's just standing at the gorilla exhibit. Like, this, this, is what's, what, this is what you saw? This is yep. Africa? And I just want to point out that at the beginning of the scene, I wrote as a joke, he's walking around to see if he can find which African mud city Reagan is thinking of based on what she saw in a museum. I wrote that joke for our comedy podcast. Nope, that's just <laughs> what the scene is. That is what the script writer wrote. Oh yeah, they walk up to a random exhibit of the African mud city of Mesopotamia, Assyria. Ooh. Right. <laughs> and Reagan says to Father Lamont, she's like, oh look, that's where... Father Marin fought Pazuzu when we saw that just now in the, the dream machine. You remember the mud city? Did we say mud city enough? <laughs> <laughs> and to be clear, the background of this little diorama in the museum, it's an illustration. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> and are we to believe that the museum accidentally recreated an accurate historical event about a demon and made an exhibit of it? Yes. In, in the back of, let's be clear, like a giraffe exhibit. Yes. Right? They were like, they were painting the back wall of the giraffe exhibit and they were like, should we put that temple we saw in Assyria, Africa, Mud City here? And he's like, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Let's work that into the background. Oh, you yes, know giraffes to... love a cliffside temple. <laughs> we'll, we'll need the Mud City when we're doing this. Yes. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> so they see that and Father Lamont's like, okay, confirmed. I need to go find Kakumo and see how to beat Zuzu, I'll go to this mud city that we just learned about right here at this exhibit. You mean the thing you told us you were going to do in the last thing? Yes, but now I'm yeah, doing it. It's confirmed now. More yeah. extra. <laughs> right. You're trying to hit two hours in your runtime. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Father Lamont goes to meet with his boss, at the cardinal guy, about going to Africa to find Kakumo. And he's like, so you, you remember the prophecy about magic healers who purge all the evil from the world? I'm pretty sure this leopard spitting guy is one of those and he knows how to beat the locust demon Assyrian guy. And to his boss's credit, his boss is like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Hey, do you remember that your assignment was clearing someone's name? What the <laughs> fuck are you talking <laughs> yeah, right. about, man? Yeah. Yeah, and Father Lamont gets fired here. <laughs> That's how you know you really fucked up, getting fired from priesting. Yeah. Because <laughs> that does not happen. <laughs> I love that he sends him on vacation. He's like, you must take a respite. And I was like, oh, he's in pedophilia mode. I get it. You just sort of automatic reaction. <laughs> yeah, I circle back in the game again. We'll just put you in a new church. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Father Lamont is fired, but he's going anyway. Then we're back in New York and Reagan is hanging out on the extremely dangerous Dove balcony. And she's daydreaming about Father Lamont, who is now doing demon detective stuff in Africa. She can see him. Yeah, they are now somehow psychically connected. And then I wondered if that was going to be forever. Because that's going to be fucked. 
<laughs> I had a thought that I was so proud of, which was she could see Father Lamont from her house, just like Sarah Palin in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Topical. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. You, you can cruise on Pazuzuber for a little while. Okay, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> right. So from there, we cut back to Africa and Father Lamont, he's asking a nun oh, in man. French about <laughs> a magical city of mud and gold that he needs to find. So stupid. So stu <laughs> Why? Why does this scene? This is how stupid this scene is, right? He asks the nun and she's like, oh, I don't know where it is. And he's like, well, the plot is over right now, but luckily a delivery man shows up and he's like, I know where everything religious is. That's my character. <laughs> yeah. Hello, goodbye. Uh, it's Ned Beatty. What <laughs> Ned is he Beatty. doing here? It is Ned Beatty. His name is Ecumenical Ed. <laughs> <laughs> no one calls him. And he knows that. all the useful information for this moment in the movie. And that's it. And then he's like, poof, gone. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say, I really want to see Ecumenical Ed's movie, right? <laughs> Just yes. slinging from town to town with religious iconography. <laughs> <laughs> Just moving Jesus pieces all over Africa. <laughs> yeah. So this plot device, Ecumenical Ed, he agrees to fly Father Lamont to the Mud City of Gold that, of course, he knows all about and the location of. And he knows, yeah, I'll fly you right there. No problem. He's like, good. Oh. Sounds like Gypti. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> the name of the mud city of gold is Gypti. Thank God it gets a name and they stop calling it the mud city of gold. This this is how lazy the writing is in this movie. As they're flying to Gypti, Richard Burton, I assume Richard Burton, the actor and not the character, goes, what now? <laughs> <laughs> and fucking, he's like, I'm going to take you to Gypti and you can find Kokomo. And he's like, all right, fine. Whatever. <laughs> Dick, we're, go we're going to Gypti, Dick. I'm taking you to Gypti. <laughs> Is there wine? Is that a rehab facility? <laughs> oh, not back to Gypti. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, because when they get there to this remote African village, there's a little baby golden retriever running around. Yes, <laughs> very what? distracting. There might as well be fireworks and a hot dog stand. <laughs> it's so weird. A giant wheel of cheese shaped like a nut. Whatever would distract me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This golden retriever was very distracting. So Father Lamont, he looks around the village to find Kakumo for a while. Oh, God. He talks to a guard for a second in the local military. He speaks in French again. It, I don't think French is big in East Africa or Assyria or Northern Iraq, whatever. I think colonialism. Colonialism, yeah. yeah. Colonialism, colonialism maybe. Brought, brought okay. a lot of French, yeah. Look, this movie's accurate, okay? <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, withdrawn, withdrawn. <laughs> this is very accurate. Guard doesn't know Kakumo. Father Lamont keeps looking. Finally, he finds some people who are like, oh, Kakumo, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know where to go. <laughs> and by keep looking, he is just wandering around going, Kakumo, Kakumo, Kakumo. Kakumo. Like he Kakumo. lost a dog. Yeah, he might as well be shaking a bag. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine showing up to Cleveland and just being like, Dave? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Dave. And then a bunch of Cleveland people are like, oh, Dave, gotcha. And they take you somewhere. And Dave turns out to be a popular sex worker. And you're like, no, no. Okay. Not that, Dave. This is indicative of two things. Either they heard him saying Dave and they were like, he probably means a prostitute. Or, and this is my pet theory, Kakumo's name means prostitute, right? <laughs> <laughs> One or the other, sure. I felt happy for you guys here because I felt like you don't get many titties in your line of work. <laughs> I know. I was so excited for the boobs. Can I say I was a little, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've gotten to the age now where I see a young woman with her boobs out and I'm like, I'm just going to Google how old she was. <laughs> 30. All right. There we go. Ah, yeah, look at nice those boobs. Because <laughs> you can't be too sure with movies from the 1960s. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We actually have a listener who kind of catalogs the boobs for us, the adult boobs, to be clear. Uh, Jackie J, if, if you could you know, give us that little shot, definitely. <laughs> Kakumo, the uh, popular sex worker in the Mud City. Mrs. Skin, we call her. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Mr. Skin? What, you guys don't have, you don't have a listener who categorizes all the boobs in the movies you watch? No, but no. we do have a, a bell that was sent to us by listeners that we ring every time there are titties. There you go, excellent. <laughs> you gotta get a titty bell. Did you have a bell right next to you for that just now? 
Yeah, yeah. it's a titty bell. It's, it's a, titty, a legit. It's a titty oh, bell. you actually <laughs> have it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen yeah. to the resonance <laughs> on this thing. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Excellent. Eli, are you super jealous right now? I'm so, I want a soundboard for years <laughs> and Noah keeps saying no. I think, it makes me sad. I think you should have a Foley table and just do physical things like not Ooh. buttons. Yeah, wobble a saw. Yeah. Can my Foley table have the Sean Penn clip in it? Absolutely. Your Foley table can have Sean Penn on it. That's true. <laughs> yeah, what's he doing? He's doing nothing. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Getting in trouble. Hanging out with El Chapo. Didn't he do something with El Chapo? <laughs> anyway, back to the what? movie. <laughs> okay, back to the movie. So Father Lamont, he finds the sex worker. That's not what he was looking for. So now he's praying for help to find the actual Kakumo that he needs to find. And Reagan is mind melding. And she's going to help. Also, with the help of Pazuzu, the three of them are going to help Father Lamont find Kakumo. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to pray to Pazuzu. <laughs> yeah. He just switches sides for a second. Pazuzu's like, again, I, I have um, I have Google Maps if you're willing to switch <laughs> sides. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking Pazuzu's, and, and uh, Richard Burton's like, fine, fine, just for a minute, I'm on Pazuzu's side. It's like an arch villain being like, ah, you guys are never going to find that. My, my riddles are too hard for you. All right, I'll give you a little <laughs> answer sheet here. This is no fun if you don't find my stuff. Just punch it into Bazoogle Maps and we'll go where we're going. <laughs> so this works and Kakumo finally gets found by Father Lamont. Kakumo is sitting in a drippy cave area doing nothing with a, with a big locust hat, which I enjoyed. Yep. I like the idea of wearing a hat based on your enemy. I think that's what I liked about it. Right. But imagine you made a locust costume for Elton John. That's the thing he's wearing. Like, <laughs> sure. And can we also point out, James Earl Jones is fucking livid in this scene. <laughs> Not the character. The James actor. Earl Jones, the actor, Absolutely. showed up and they were like, so, um, Mr. Jones, famous Shakespearean fuck actor and you. great, great performer. Here's you hear your me say fuck loin, you? Yep. Here's your loincloth. Fuck you. And yep. And Locust Helmet. <laughs> this poor man had to be in so many racist-ass movies. Yeah. So many racist I mean, he's movies. in Soul Man. Top 10 he, most racist-ass movies. It's true. We, we did that one. We watched that one. We yeah. watched that one. Oh, wow. You? Oh, buddies. Yeah. Secular bonus, yeah. 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 <laughs> Secular bonus racism. <laughs> yeah, basically. Is that C. Thomas Howell with the blackface? Yes, it yes. is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Sure the fuck is. <laughs> so... Yeah, James Earl Jones is furious. He's just sitting there and Father Lamont's like, all right, I found you. I need your help. And then Kakumo is like, wait a minute. Uh, did you have Pazuzu help you find me? That's fucking cheating. And it doesn't make any sense. Why would he help with this? You don't even believe in Jesus Christ. You should have asked Jesus Christ for help. And Richard Burton goes, Fuck! Oh, Jesus Christ! That's God, right. he's my whole guy. Yeah. Oh, and I, I wear that little cross with him on. I was literally wearing a statue of the guy. That's on me. Yeah, that is on me. <laughs> but I am faithful. And so Kakuma's like, "Oh, you're faithful to Jesus Christ? Seems like you're not. But you're gonna have to prove it. I will need you to prove it by having you do basically like the Tony Robbins fire walk thing, <laughs> because <laughs> fucking Kakumo has a tiny like." a four foot long strip, not of hot coals, but of spikes sticking up like the size of a welcome mat area that <laughs> he's like, prove you love Jesus Christ by walking across my spiky welcome mat. Yeah. I could have jumped that and I am not a jumping man. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but Richard Burton tries. He steps on the nails because why walking across nail. So to be clear, just st there's spaces, there's spaces the size of feet to miss. <laughs> okay. To be clear, it's lying on a bed of nails, not walking. No. That's a very different stunt. It's walking across coals, but they, they forgot this or Kukumo is doing a super good prank because he steps on it. He instantly gets nails in his feet and he falls down. Face first into the nails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're not the nails. But they're not the nails. No, they're not. Oh, also, this is the spitting the tomato or the very specific up, 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 piece up, up. of fruit that a that cocoon. Is about. It's a cocoon. A cocoon. Oh, like cocumo. Yeah, that's why I that's what I thought it was oh, meant to be. Oh, that's genius. Okay. I see what the It's not genius. He is. This it's is very not. good. This is very good writing. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I just spent this whole movie wondering which of the Beach Boys saw this movie. It was like, yes. Co Kokomo, yeah, right. <laughs> Kokomo, Kokomo, yeah. got it, got it. Okay, but like, imagine it's your day because 
Because James Earl Jones, again, acclaimed actor James Earl Jones does spit out this cuckoo or whatever it's called. No, I mean, I think it actually is a tomato, but go okay. on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the prop is a tomato for sure, right? The prop's yeah. a tomato. Yeah. Who do you think's job it was to be like, and then you're going to, and then you're going to spit a tomato. Do you mind? <laughs> Mr. Speak Jones. up. I can't hear you. Uh, Mr. Jones, I was just wondering if, uh, I know you're um, studying your lines for King Lear, but if you would just. I'm going to say Ibid. Do you remember when I said, fuck you? Did you say, everything you, you said, said fuck I said, me? fuck yeah, you. Yeah, okay. All right. No. But they, they, get, they got him to do it. So I didn't, I didn't understand this moment, actually. He says, you know, the Father Lamont's about to walk the spikes. And Kakumo says, all right, well, if Pazuzu comes for you, I'm going to spit a leopard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. what, what did that? So it was a test of whether Pazuzu was in Father Lamont. So like the test is if I spit a leopard, it's Pazuzu. If I spit a tomato, you're good. <laughs> I'm going to quote my friend Katie from earlier. You are giving this more thought than they ever did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, he spits a tomato. I guess it's fine. You say tomato, I say leopard. <laughs> <laughs> Father Lamont tries to do the spike walk, steps right on the spikes, impales his foot, and he falls down. He either passed or failed the test. I don't know. I think we're going to need a quick break either way to figure it out. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the Assyrian African locust demon who flies on the teeth of the wind tie up his business with a tap dancer in New York City? Will the leopard-spitting, Christian-friendly shaman from Africa be able to help with that? Can a movie possibly go off the rails from there? Find out the answer to those questions is absolutely yes when we return for the exertastic conclusion of Exorcist II, The Heretic. And if you'll follow me through here, you'll see my favorite part of the apartment, the balcony. Wow, beautiful view. Excuse me, uh, why why are there giant gaps in the railing? You noticed, yes, this is very new American architecture. It says, I don't have a child and I never want to be visited by one. Hmm. Right, right. And this uh, statue? Oh, this is a pigeon box, actually. Sorry, this multi-million dollar apartment comes with a, a pigeon box? Is that what you said? Pigeon box, yep. Pigeons around it, maybe in it. You could put seeds on it. I mean, you can put seeds on anything. Yep. Anyway, are you interested? Would you like the place? Well, let me ask you this. My daughter, Reagan, occasionally goes into trances. Bit of a fight with a demon. Do you think this balcony is a great idea? Oh, for sure. Then we'll take it. Question, are there pigeons in the box? I don't know, man. What? Why don't you know? Oh, okay, Heath. We lost that rumble in the last commercial break to Alan and Katie pretty hard. Yeah, Katie's crazy strong. I know, I know. But we're not out of the game yet. We could still impress them with our Raycon stuff. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, Katie, Alan, are, are you guys ready for more recording? Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I was getting the last of my bites out. Really? Would have thought you'd be done with those. Not important. Uh, did you guys see this? Ooh, those look amazing. Where'd you get all this stuff? We got it at Raycon. What's... Raycon. Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point. Whether you're looking for a pair of everyday earbuds, low latency gaming headphones, or a speaker with a battery that will last all night at your next party, Raycon's got you covered. Oh, you guys must be loaded. Uh, no, I have tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt, Katie. But Raycon started half the price of other premium audio brands, so you don't even have to choose between products. You can get one of each or a pair and spare and still pay less than you would with some of the other guys. It's true. I love the Raycon's earbuds they sent us so much, I got their wireless speaker so I can blast tunes for everyone to enjoy. And don't forget about the noise isolation, awareness mode, and tap functions. Right, much like when Katie lifted me over her head like Bane did to Batman. I will not forget. Ready to buy something small with a big impact? Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right, guys, we're sold. Heath, I'm sorry about the lifting thing. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it got me out of the bite zone for a second. So yeah, no need. Yeah. Kind of helped. And we're back. 
When we left off, Father Lamont tried to prove his faith in Christ by walking on a bed of nails, and it went very badly. But it also worked. It's, it's a weird test. As soon as he impaled his foot on the spikes, he got zooped to a doctor's <laughs> office, and Kakumo is the doctor there. <laughs> hey, hey, y'all. Y'all, what? What? <laughs> what? Yeah, good what? question. What's James happening? Jones standing over you in a lab coat, like, hello. <laughs> I love it. Here's what I think happened. I think they made him spit a tomato, and James Earl Jones was like, you motherfuckers. And he punched it. <laughs> and they were like, fine, fine. It was a dream sequence, and you get to be a doctor with glasses. Just stop punching Richard Burton. And he was like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back when there's a doctor's coat for me to wear. <laughs> I did the Malcolm X movie. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to give him graying temples, you know, so that he's a sophisticate. Mm -hmm. Instead, there was just these gray, like, Bride of Frankenstein strips. Yep. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> also, by the way, did I mention he's a doctor slash studier of locustology? <laughs> he's a doctor slash... Buggest. It's a locust lab, also, in addition to being a doctor's office. And he starts explaining how locusts work. So the way they work is they become an evil swarm, but only if their wings brush against each other, because that <laughs> makes them mad. And then they become like cannibalistic and crazy and evil, and they swarm and they go after healers in villages or whatever. He seems to be proposing the mythology of this movie. And I Googled it because I think this is so stupid. There's no way that anyone thinks this is real. No, no, no don't worry. No one does. <laughs> the mythology of this movie is that locusts are just crickets in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> right. He says that bugs are evil so many times. So like, many times. Right in front of them, too. <laughs> they made you a doctor. But a dumb doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but then this is also where he introduces us to the, I'm going to say, clumsiest metaphor of the movie. Mm. They have evolved one good locust. Right. And that locust is going to ch chill everyone out and edit out all of Eli's references to boy The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> children will be our agents in the swarm. Yeah. What? <laughs> They they created a good locust who's just like, okay, namaste, everybody. Namaste, everybody <laughs> calm down. And that makes all the locusts in the swarm who would normally be corrupted by the wing touching, it makes them all calm down. And if that one good locust is in the swarm, it's all good and that's going to solve the movie, I guess. Yeah, I could tell you from experience that I've never gotten more agitated when I'm upset and someone's like, hey, man, just chill. <laughs> yeah, I, That always calms me right down. Yeah. yeah, I really wanted to see him putting a little police cap on the good locust and releasing it into the NYPD. All right, see? Get that murder rate down. <laughs> okay, so we learned about the good locust and then we're back in New York and Reagan gets out of bed and she breaks out of the clinic place that she was in. She was in a hospital bed in that clinic, and she just leaves. She's not really allowed to. We see a plane landing, and a, <laughs> the movie was clearly trying to be artistic here. They show the plane's wheels coming out, and the plane it looks like a locust. So, Oh, art. I didn't notice that. I just noticed that it was the reverse of the shot earlier when they showed the landing gear going up. Okay, it might just be that. I don't know. I feel like I've been overthinking it all day. I appreciate your effort to make this movie good. <laughs> right. So then we cut to somebody giving kids a bath at the million dollar apartment where no. Reagan and Sharon no. and Dr. No. Tuscan live. No. That's not no. what's happening. It's so <laughs> fucking confusing. We're over at Dr. Tuscan's house where she's bathing her children. Wait, that's yeah, her? mentioned children. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so, but Sharon's there too. I think this is the apartment. I think Sharon and Dr. Tuscan and Reagan live in this apartment. <laughs> Sharon just no. happened to be taking a bath in her own house. Sharon was <laughs> There are two concurrent baths happening in two different places. What this movie presupposes is that two people can bathe at the same time. <laughs> okay, yeah, I didn't think that was possible. I get it. I get it now. I get it now. Okay, two different places. Whatever. I guess from there we cut to Sharon in the apartment where Sharon lives. 
in the wettest robe I have ever seen. <laughs> okay. This is so upset. Thank you. The, I think about this robe and not because of the boobs. I think about this robe so much because I was like, is that what robes are supposed to be? Like, I no. questioned. <laughs> I was like, because why else? She, do, the priest guy, he's back. He's got his dashiki shirt, which is fucking rules. <laughs> Screamed again. <laughs> He's got a locust hat. Just take it off, man. You've been wearing right. it all yeah. day. <laughs> He's got it. He shows up and she has apparently gotten out of the bath and is soaking wet under her robes. Now, the purpose of this is so that we could see Sharon's boobs because Sharon was like, show you not letting me be in the first movie. I'm going to show my tits in the second <laughs> movie. Fucking panic and Needle Park assholes. But what it looks like is that she thinks robes are towels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> right. And... The whole point of the scene was just for Father Lamont to show up and Sharon to yell at him and be like, stop demon hunting. Get out of my fucking life. I don't like you. You're not helpful. And that was it. Yep. Yeah. And to show her nipples. I think. And to show, and to show, yeah. and okay. To show her really nipples. just the nipples. Got it. So then we're back at the Museum of Natural History again. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it must have been a sponsor. Reagan, after she Reagan broke out membership. of the clinic. Yeah. She went right back to the museum. She didn't break out of the clinic. She walked out and went, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. The yeah, nurse was, like, it's okay. was like, Reagan, where are you going? She was like, stop. And she was like, oh, yeah, fine. No. Fine. Yeah. Bye bye. You're going to miss big circle nut time where we roll it around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, she goes to the museum and Father Lamont finds her there very easily. They bump right into each other again. And she's like, so did you find the leopard guy with all, all the answers to our problems? And yes, he did. He's like, yeah, all we got to do is fight the very concept of evil. And then we win. We good locust. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh, cool. So did um, did Kukumo give you anything that you're gonna use to like fight in this final battle? No, 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 no. Just we fight evil. No, he pretty much just said it's your fault. Yeah. Totally unrelatable. I, I was told that section was cuttable, except I'm wearing this dashiki underneath, so <laughs> yeah. they'll probably keep right. it. They'll probably keep it. But but Reagan's like, don't worry about it. I brought the fucking Scientology machine from the clinic. <laughs> <laughs> we can use the mind meld to win the thing or whatever. Yeah. In like a jeans West bag. I was real into it. It's, I know. Yeah. It's such a I didn't know it first. bag. She's just like, oh, cool. We got to fight evil. I brought this bag and I was like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> okay. The, the machine's inside. Got it. So <laughs> Father Lamont and Reagan, they go to some shitty hotel room in Manhattan mm -hmm. to do the mind meld together. Yes. I think the church cut off his per diem when they fired him. So now he's staying in like a seedy hotel. <laughs> right. That, the the, the African-American people in the hallway, uh, only ones in the movie, by the way, who won't be in a mud city, <laughs> there to indicate to us that this is a shady neighborhood. Yes. No, no. There is a black kid on stage with their tap dancing who keeps getting pushed off the stage by the other <laughs> Oh, yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> also, in the, in, the, in the previous scene, we see that uh, Dr. Tuscan is on the move now to try and find Reagan and the machine. And I love it because she puts on half a vest she just puts on one one armhole of a vest and heads out the door. And I was like, it's just another armhole, lady. It's just another armhole. You must have the time for a second armhole. And she leaves without the children. Yeah, but you know why she's searching for her? Because it's Reg against the machine. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? No. Eli's so happy about that. <laughs> Alan is so glad someone else can make a dad joke. I have. Here's how proud of that joke I am. I didn't write it into our notes. I wrote it into a post-it and stuck it on my computer and was like, all right, Eli, don't bust this gold out too early. <laughs> Is it, is it on a little board that says Eli's naughty thoughts? <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. I've been there. Eli's great jokes. It's yeah. Dream journal. So it's Rage against the machine. They they link up in, in the mind melder machine in this weird hotel room and they see Father Marin. And Father Marin, I enjoyed this part. Father Marin's like, oh, good. You're finally back in the universe where we talk through the dreams. I'm really fucking tired. You guys fight the demon now. I don't know. I'm done. <laughs> And so now they're in charge of the plot because he passed it off in the dream universe. Yep. He's sick of being a low rent Professor X collecting all these special kids yep. around the world. And yeah. 
That's an X-Men reference from comic books for you, Katie. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I liked it, Alan. Thanks. It's no rig against the machine, but it's it's good. It'll do. <laughs> the Zuber. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Father Marin quits in the mind meld world. Uh, the buzzer goes off on the machine, so the meld is done. And Father Lamont just bolts out of the hotel room and runs out into the streets of Manhattan to go somewhere. We learn he's about to go to Washington, D.C. to go back to that house where it all began. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to be clear, Richard Burton, Father Lamont, has been taken over by Pazuzu, the demon spirit of the air. Oh, he's taken over now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of that last meld? Yeah, because of the last mm -hmm. meld. And so he will now spend the rest of the movie commuting as the demon god Pazuzu. <laughs> <laughs> we will watch the Pazuzu buy train tickets. We will watch the Pazuzu get a little lost in the subway. We will watch the Pazuzu, the demon god, hold up for a second because Reagan hasn't quite caught up yet. <laughs> ah, is this a local or an express? Are we going to be able to stop at all the spots? Ah, I'm a demon. I should have just flown on the... Teeth of the Wind. That would have been so much easier to do the Teeth of the Wind straight to DC. <laughs> we watched them get on a tra on an Amtrak train starting in New York to Washington, D.C. Pazuzu's just going to sit there fucking doing a crossword for the entire train. <laughs> I would pay. I would. We always talk about Crazy Billionaire Remake. My Crazy Billionaire Remake, I just want to see Pazuzu making small talk with Reagan as they ride in the train. So, so um... I don't know if you remember me. I knew you when you were younger. You were like this tone. Wow, you have grown. Painting her little cheeks. Uh, but I, I made you vomit on a guy. Well, I'm sure you've heard this story a ton, but I'm... There was another guy, but we're not going to talk about that. Hey, there was another guy, but we don't talk about it. He, he said no to the contract and Richard Burton did. So fuck that guy. Am I right? Six letter word for wind demon. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to touch on this line because it's so fucking insane. He jumps on the train, right? She jumps after him. And we cut to Dr. Thorsten, who is like it's trying Tuscan. to get Dr. <laughs> Tuskin, right? It will not stick to my brain because I cared so little. And she just says to the camera, apropos of nothing, stupid bitch. Yes. <laughs> right. She's mad because Reagan stole the synchronizer, right? Yeah. It's Sharon who says Yeah, stupid Sharon bitch. is yeah. the one who says stupid bitch. Yeah. She's mad about that. Stupid bitch. Stupid bitch. This has not been a, a stupid bitch movie. It this has is not. a very <laughs> this is a very out like I I would see this in a Pixar film before I would see this. <laughs> this has been like a Pazuzu and Kukumo, and she's just over here like this fucking asshole. <laughs> so I think the, the stupid bitch line was supposed to set up that Sharon has now become possessed by the demon. But how? Yeah. Because Sharon never mind melded. But but also it's the politest demon you've ever encountered. So it's like, <laughs> Pazuzu through this whole movie has been like, I'm sorry, do you need a, a tea or something? Can I get you anything? <laughs> yeah. And instead it's like, it gets in Sharon. It's like, uh-uh, stupid bitch time. <laughs> yeah. Katie, you make a good point. Sharon absolutely did not ever mind meld, but also go fuck yourself. She has Pazuzu in her now. <laughs> it's it's the enough. plot. I accept that. I, I, With all the mirrors that's that's in those, that apartment, the, the Pazuzu is just bouncing around that apartment that's all day true. long. <laughs> No, you know what they say is if you go out when it's cold with a wet robe on, you're going to catch a Pazuzu. <laughs> <laughs> he shoots right in through the nips. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. There it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Really want that bell now. Feed a Pazuzu and you'll have to starve a Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, they're, they're all headed to Washington, D.C. now. Reagan actually calls the office to tell Dr. Tuscan, like, hey, we're at Penn Station. This guy's, uh, he might be possessed. I don't know. He's taking the train to Washington. Sorry, I stole that machine. And now they're all going to race to Washington, D.C. to have the finale. <laughs> Except they're going to fly. So they're going to win. <laughs> yeah. You'd think, you would think they'd win, wouldn't you? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> right. So Dr. Tuscan and Sharon decide to drive in their car across Manhattan to Penn Station and get on a train, but then they 
change their mind and they drive to fucking LaGuardia. Yeah. None of the, this was unrealistic. Anybody from none, nobody <laughs> who lives in New York would do this. This pulled me right out of the movie. Well, okay. Now be fair. This was pre nine 11 where you just, you just got into the airport. And once you got past the gate, you just got on whatever plane you wanted. You just drive to the plane. Yeah, exactly. You took your hunting knife, your two kids, your Quran, and you just got on whatever plane you wanted. <laughs> But what this sequence is for is we're supposed to see, I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, we're supposed to see Pazuzu throwing obstacles in Sharon and Dr. Yeah. Thorsten's way? Yes. Yes. And his only obstacle is a car accident. <laughs> That's all he could think of. He's doing the like lowest level stalling that a demon of the wind could possibly do. <laughs> At one point, there's just an injured guy who like staggers to the front of Dr. Thurton's car and he's like, oh, I'm so hurt. And Sharon's like, keep going. Just drive. Just keep driving. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't make eye contact. <laughs> don't make eye contact. We were, oh, I looked at him. I look. Okay. Hi. Hi. Yeah. No, sorry. I don't have anything. No, she goes, I'm a doctor. I can help you. And I was like, you're a psychologist. I don't think he needs that right she now. Got that black bag in the backseat though. <laughs> what does she have in there? A synchronizer? I want her to get over to him. Okay, quick, quick. Tell me about your relationship with your mom. Oh, your leg is broken. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need to finger your heart real quick. <laughs> so, Dr. Tuscan oh, and sorry, Sharon. Sorry, sorry. Oh, no. Is sorry. that a real no, belt? Did no, we get another? Feet, I'm showing my boobs. Just another case. nibble? Don't worry. I'll do it. I'm, I'm showing too. my boobs. I'm so sorry. Give us four bells. Four bells, four nibbles for me and Eli. Really quick. Yeah. Four? <laughs> Perfect. There okay. All right. Okay. So Dr. Tuscan and Sharon finally make it to Washington. They get in a cab. Dr. Tuscan says, take us to 8 Prospect Street. And the cabbie is like, I don't know, 8 Prospect Street. Because I guess he knows the addresses of all the demon attacks in the all city. All the demon houses. He's yeah, like obviously. He's the ecumenical Ed of demons. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and meanwhile, Father Lamont and Reagan get on a bus. <laughs> He's possessed by Pazuzu, so he yells at the bus driver. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We have to talk about this. The bus driver is eating a big sloppy sandwich, <laughs> and Pazuzu, spirit king of the wind, has to go, come on, man, hurry it the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have ridden a lot of city buses in my life and never would a bus driver listen to a shitty priest African <laughs> shirt wearing passenger being like, let's go when you're eating a good sandwich. Pazuzu getting arrested on the curb. Oh my God, this is fucking bullshit. This is bullshit. This is bu I don't, I don't give consent to film this. Oh, Pazuzu on cops. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna, oh God, I'm running. Oh shit. I wish I was a locust right now. I could fly away from these guys. Holy shit. So you don't even know him. He's a good demon god. You don't even know him. <laughs> Pazuzu's wife is on the front lawn in short shorts. <laughs> Let him talk. <laughs> Let Pazuzu. Now I'm picturing the locust in a wife beater getting escorted. Locust to gets sprayed by a by a fire extinguisher all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on the way to the house. Father Lamont and Reagan get there first. Father Lamont goes inside, check out the death room where the exorcism happened back in the day. And Reagan's a little bit behind him. And she gets like the perfect finale amount of undressed by the barbed <laughs> wire <laughs> on her way in. <laughs> we, we see exactly the negotiation for how naked Linda was willing to get. They were like, oh, come on, nighty. And she was like, fine, nighty. I'll wear a nighty for the final thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, so then Father Lamont opens the door to that room and there's a giant swarm of demon locusts. They pour out and attack him. And also, this is making the cab that Sharon and Dr. Tuscan are in go crazy. Like the cab itself goes haywire and they crash. But very conveniently, they crash right at the final scene at the house. <laughs> Into their location, mm -hmm. yep. their destination. So I think the cab got hit by the locusts. Oh. I think the locusts are supposed to be what broke the windshield. Oh, I thought the driver punched the windshield Well, the out. windshield, like, it, it, yeah. it, it shattered. It's spider web. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then... The cabbie, who is a fucking beast, was like, oh, I know what to do in this situation. I'm punch not going to stick my head out the window. I'm going to punch a fucking <laughs> hole in this thing. That is really quick thinking. This is why you don't go to 8 Prospect. I always told myself. <laughs> but this is also the third time in the movie I screamed. Yeah. Out that yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> right. So they crash. 
right at the house. Reagan finally gets inside and walks upstairs. The locusts are gone at this point, and Father Lamont is just sitting in the corner next to the stairwell, staring at the door to that room. Yeah, and pointing. Yeah. So, again, Pazuzu possesses Father Lamont, gets him there, the door opens up, and he's like, we should honestly wait for Sharon and Dr. Thurban. They're they're like right outside. I feel weird if we just, I don't want to get started without them. I think her name is Tuscan, isn't I'm it? pretty sure it's Tuscan. Yeah, it's, I it's, it's, literally it's, say a different word every time because I refuse to remember it. Dr. Turd Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so meanwhile, at the crash, Sharon gets out of the wrecked car. And for a second, I guess she's possessed too. So she's going to leave Dr. Tuscan trapped inside the car, which is starting to burn, maybe. And the reason Dr. Tuscan is trapped is because the metal wrought iron fence got inside of the crashed car and made uh -huh. a cage like Magneto did it. And yep, <laughs> so she's stuck in there. That's an X-Men reference as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking to yourself, podcast listener. You're like, oh, is the tension now that will the doctor escape the car in time? Nope, she just gets out. Yeah, she also <laughs> just gets out. She just gets out. Yeah. But, and this is the stupidest thing possible, Sharon, who is possessed by Pazuzu. So you should really try to follow Pazuzu's game plan here. Yeah. Sharon, who's possessed by Pazuzu, is standing in a puddle of gasoline, and she's like, oh, I'm going to light myself on fire. <laughs> So Sharon Pazuzu self-immolates outside the house to give her herself Pazuzu time inside to <laughs> fist fight Richard Burton. Yeah, I, this all makes sense. This tracks. Okay, Could I just Pazuzu wanna... just have Sharon not attack himself during his thing? Well, he could just go in and out of people. He's Pazuzu. Yeah. Or have Sharon help with the attack or whatever. You'd think? Yeah, it seems like he had a better use of his time. But the movie needed to give us another instance where someone watched someone burn to death and didn't do anything. <laughs> and did Call nothing. Back. She stands there. For, I'm not kidding. She stands there for the rest of the movie watching Sharon on fire being like, oh, Sharon. <laughs> yeah, <right>. Sharon, <laughs> don't. They were right. It does smell like pork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're cutting back and forth between this fire scene outside at the crash and Reagan and Father Lamont inside. So Reagan opens the door to the old room and sees the demon-possessed ghost of herself from yeah. the past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Father Lamont attacks her. Right. Attacks Reagan in real reality, Reagan. Well, no, first he starts smooching baby-possessed Reagan, which is very upsetting because I think she's supposed to be seven in that first movie. She's a child. Yeah. Yikes. She's still a child, but she's definitely supposed to be a child in that first movie. Yeah. But he and zombie Reagan are smooching now, and then zombie Reagan, re, Pazuzu, tells him to kill real Reagan, so we watch Richard Burton beat the shit out of Reagan for a couple of scenes. <laughs> if you thought that this movie doesn't end with a fist fight between esteemed Shakespearean Richard Burton <laughs> and a teenage and a girl, child. you are incorrect. You're incorrect. Yep. That is what happens for a while right now. The whole house is also imploding as oh, this yeah. is happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. is, it, is the idea that like the depths of hell have opened up right below the house and like locusts are pouring out. I thought it was because the car hit it, but now that you say that, I think you're or right. Locusts, or I thought the locusts were doing structural damage somehow. Yeah, there is a scene where like a crack opens up and there's just a locust like, oh shit. <laughs> I did it. Ah, you guys said I couldn't bake through concrete, but this this sheetrock's pretty cheap actually. Right. This is the part of the movie that I refer to as the Universal Studios Pazuzu experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be great. The tour guide at the front is, oh no, here comes Pazuzu everybody hold on <laughs> camera shaking right so all this is happening and good reagan reminds father lamont about the good locust concept that they learned from james earl jones right. <laughs> but then bad reagan is like no that that's you're going to believe the leopard spitting guy that's not real that's not real we keep fighting so they fight for another like 20 minutes of Richard Burton punching Thank you. This, this woman in the face. This is what I cannot emphasize to you enough is that 
There is so much footage of acclaimed actor Richard Burton <laughs> elbow dropping what is very clearly a real teenage girl. <laughs> Just, oh, Pacum, oh, Pacum, yes, the old Shakespearean stunner. If if Richard Burton power bombed Reagan into the floor, a la WWE, it could not be more silly. Just like Katie did to me during the Rumble. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, he fist fights a teenager and eventually rips out her heart. <laughs> yeah, whose heart is that? It's Pazuzu's heart. Pazuzu. The demon's heart? But, uh, yeah, demon heart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Where the body that he is ripping the heart out of comes from? Big question. Yeah. Well, it's the Not Pazuzu, a lot of answers. Pazuzu Reagan that was on the bed looking sexy. Is the main weakness of a locust demon a heart pull? Is that what we're to believe? A pair, uh, James Earl Jones appears as a ghost and does a full-on Obi-Wan rip out her heart thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, is it, isn't it also like French really confuses it? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and th this is my favorite part of the ending here of this final sequence, right? So the locusts are scaring everything. Earlier in the movie when we were watching the healer boy, Kukumunga, right? He had this swingy thing, which is something that they actually use, by the way. I thought that was bullshit, but I looked it up. They actually do it. It'll stop locusts. You like swing this whistle thing and it makes mm -hmm. a noise that fucks with the locust. Oh. It's a really cool scientific thing. Yeah. So that happened earlier in the movie. Reagan, of course, doesn't have a swingy thing. No, no so whistle. So we just watch her do the <laughs> ride him cowboy gesture. Oh, she's doing the Apache dance. Bum, she's saying, <laughs> okay, bum, I, I was bum, trying to think of a way to bum, say it that bum, isn't the Apache do, dance, but then it's, it's the Apache dance. <laughs> she's doing the Apache. Imagine a woman with a totally, Tonto jump on it. a totally straight face doing Tonto jump on it for like four minutes while Richard Burton like does WWE style wrestling moves to a teenage girl. That is the climax of this film. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. My life. <laughs> this film wasn't the only thing to climax at this point. <laughs> I was the boy who came. It's my Harry Potter fan fiction. Also, at this point, we see that all of the lights are on in the surrounding houses and nobody has even come out to see what's happened. Did like you... a car hit a building <laughs> and then fell down in a swarm of locusts. I feel like you're at least going to get off the couch and poke your head out. Yeah, this Suburbia, is a comment, am I right? Yeah, a commentary on the... <laughs> Honey, are they doing a locust demon thing at 8 Prospect again? Yeah, yeah, don't go out. I just hope he whipped that kid's ass. Are they all white? Yes. Let it, <laughs> all white. Let it fizzle. Is somebody doing Tonto jump on it? It'll be fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Also, this is when Father Lamont, he, I guess he's cured now. And he walks over and he's like, oh, yeah, Sharon's like dying right there. Don't be too hard on yourself, though, Dr. Tuscan. You're just a dumb scientist. And he does like a quick prayer for them. But then he's like, yep, we vanquished evil. We won. So there we go. So Dr. Tuscan, this is the end of the movie. I'm talking the last 10 seconds of the movie. Dr. Tuscan turns to Richard Burton and goes, you're Reagan's mom now. And he's like, yup. <laughs> yes, I am. We might as well watch Father Lamont and Reagan like riding a bus together and their smiles slowly fade as this movie ends. <laughs> they just leave on a tandem bicycle. Yeah, yeah. it's so weird. Doesn't Reagan have a mom still in the movie? Yeah, she's yeah. just away on set. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Okay. you cannot give a teenager away. But you're, if you're a psychiatrist, you could just give a teenager to whoever you want. You can uh, just give one your kid, yeah. 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 Oh, okay, that's your power of attorney yeah. psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but then in the last shot of the movie, the police lights are sort of like acting as the synchronizer. Yeah, and, think about it. Uh, I am. <laughs> because Dr. Tuscan's <laughs> face. She gets this like mean look on her face. Yeah. I thought, is she Pazuzu now? Because she's a healer. Oh, I didn't think no. about that. Were they really angling to make another fucking movie after this Is this like this an one? Azazel situation like in Fallen? Ooh. Maybe. Oh. Also about possibly an Assyrian demon. I forget. But yeah, maybe. Interesting. Well, that's the end of the fucking movie. <laughs> They're just like, yup, zoop, we're done. And you're the dad of this child now. Done. You're the mom now, dog. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so before we wrap it up, I just want to ask the panel, if you had that mind-melding thing, what would you do with it? Ooh, dibs Ooh. on Heath's mom. What? Wow. I don't know why I asked these questions. <laughs> 
Does anybody have a not my mom answer to what you would do with the mind melder? No, my answer was also your mom. God damn it. Oh, oh that's going to do it for the exorcist <laughs> to the heretic. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie for next week. So Eli, what's on deck? Well, we'll be watching Dilly Loves Kitty live in Seattle, Washington. Ooh. It's sold out. You can't come. All right. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> With that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 395 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Katie and Alan for joining us. So much fun. So um, where can everybody go to hear more from you? Where's uh, Werewolf Ambulance? Where can they connect with you on the internets? We're on all of the podcast places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find us. You can go to werewolfambulance.libsyn.com uh, to find us. Excellent. We have a Patreon. Yes, where we do action movies. Ooh, what? Yeah. yeah. yeah oh yeah. my God, I'm becoming a patron instantly. I'm going to, whatever's happening during the last 10 seconds of this podcast, <laughs> Eli's not paying attention because I'm signing up. We just did an episode on Crank. So if you're interested so in a So good. Lot of I love that so movie. So good. I'm oh, so mad. Statham? Come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> amazing movie. You, you all con concluded that that was just an amazing movie. With and his magical fart oh. powers, obviously. You, you had to kind of just do a weird episode because that's a really great movie. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. that's the one. That's the ticket. You got it. All right. Uh, yeah, we're on all the, well, we're on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. We've abandoned Facebook. So if you want to write anything bad about us, just go there and do it. That's yeah. fair. Oh, yeah. that's a, We changed our name to Werewolf Ambulance Complaints Department. Mm -hmm. So log yeah. in there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. And of course, a big thanks to all our Patreon donors for the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Eagle Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Katie, Alan, and Eli, I'm Heath. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then... We'll leave you with the Animal House close. Richard Burton read scripts he agreed to much more carefully from then on. Kakumo got in trouble with OSHA for the holographic lobby with the bed of magic nails at his office. <laughs> Father Lamont began wearing a dashiki and kufi everywhere and <laughs> got the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> <laughs> And Linda Blair got to tap her way into many, many other films. <laughs> <laughs>Katie, if you don't feel safe right now, tell us. We will let you do the five count. I just blinked a couple times, but it's like... Yeah. <laughs> you did that hand thing yeah. that said you've been abducted. Oh, no. <laughs> Put the spot on your palm. <laughs> so sad. Order it. Why did Katie order an angel shot? Weird in the middle shot. Of the podcast That's weird. Nobody ever orders a B-52. I mean, Heath, oh. Heath does do shots during our podcast, but that's because he's a functional alcoholic. Same, Same. Same. Because he's functional. Yeah. Functional was nice. Okay. Um, what is the Animal House clothes versus the Breakfast Club clothes? It is the oh, Breakfast Club clothes. It's the Animal House he's, clothes because that's an actual correct says reference to the thing in the movie. He's a child. The Breakfast Club clothes is like what people misremember him. about how the Animal House and clothes happened yeah. in once, the Animal House. And it was hard. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.